you for inviting me to your office. I, I've actually taken over your desk because it looks nicer where you're sitting than where I'm sitting. And that's because you've just moved in here. You really only officially took over full time at the beginning of April. Yes, that's right. Yes, so it's quite new. And we'll explore why it's new and what your excitement is. But I guess your first excitement is you, you've just done your first trip. Uh, you've gone up to, to Latvia. Yes, to, to Riga. There was a conference there for children and family ministries leaders um, in Riga for the whole of the Baltic Union. What, what's that like? Because you're, you're used to, I mean, you, you're experienced to traveling the world and lecturing on family issues and children's issues. This is the first time you've done it representing the Trans-European Division. Was it a different experience for you to go there that way? I think it was. I think I went there and I suddenly had this crisis of confidence, like, oh my goodness, this time I'm representing the division, I'm not just Karen Holford. So that felt quite daunting. But then I just thought, well, I'll just be me and do what I normally do, and it was fine. So um, it was just that first initial step, I think. I don't think you're unique in that. Uh, I mean, you and I have come in at a similar time, um, and most of the directors I've talked to that are new in the division are having that same kind of, how do I work my way around? How can I best be of service to the unions and the churches across this division? Has going to Riga given you an idea, a picture of, of what you can actually achieve? I think so, I hope so. It was really exciting actually to be able to share what I've learned with the people who came along. And what I love is when I see people's faces light up and they go, oh wow, I never thought about it like that, or I can use that, that's something I can do this week. And uh, I really enjoyed people learn, watching them learn actually and saying, this is great, I can use this stuff. So, so what's practical? You, you go there, you've, you've run dozens if not hundreds of workshops before, what did you go in there trying to achieve? Really, I like to make people look at things in a different way because I think when people see it differently, then, then things change. Um, and so I wanted to help them see actually how we can help children develop their character. Because we talk about character and we know that we're trying to develop our character, but no one actually tells us how we do that or tells parents what can you do practically to help your children develop their character. And I learned some very simple things, um, and I just shared them, and people were saying, wow, why did no one ever tell us this before? And I guess I had that feeling when I first learned about them too, so. And I guess you've got the challenge now that you were giving them resources that are in English. Yes. And they're saying, please, land for you. <laughs> well, they did translate my handouts before I got there, so I tried to give them something that was useful. Because there's always the challenge that when you're being translated, you can't say quite as much or do quite as much. The time is shrunk. Um, so I like to give handouts that are fuller that they can use immediately. Now, of course, you served in the South England Conference as within the Family Ministries, Children's Ministries Department. And you're a, a therapist in your own right, and that's what you've been doing in Scotland. What persuaded you that you should leave that behind and come here to this office and try and become multilingual and help with family issues across this part of Europe? That's a really good question. Um, I, I, was totally, I was totally out of the blue. I didn't expect um, to be asked at all or to be invited to even consider the possibility. Um, but then I thought about it and the more I thought about it, the more I got excited because um, Rafat said what he wanted was people that could um, do training and develop resources and I just love doing both of those. I'm just passionate about them and I'm passionate about families and have been for years and so to bring all that together and think how can, now I can make a bigger difference perhaps. But there is always a challenge because um, you want to be able to reach the people at the grassroots and you're so far away and how do you do something, anything that can make a difference from here to the families and children that are struggling. Um, so it's how to fill that gap really creatively. And by the time we come to 2020, and those four years will probably just go by in a flash, mm. what do you hope you will have achieved? I hope that people will be inspired to think about children and families differently. 
I say children, although I'm not a children's ministries director, because they're so closely intermingled. And you can't really talk about children without families, or families without children, although there are obviously families without children. Um, and so I'd like to be able to see families being more inspired about what they can do to help their children grow spiritually, to develop their characters, for them to work together to think about how can the simple everyday things they do become um, part of their experience with God, part of their way of serving the communities, being an outreach, but in very simple ways. And I suppose the cynic might say, is this just the TED duplicating resources? Because you did go on this trip together with Claire, who is excellent in children's ministries, and, and you're there together with her, and they could be saying, well, we're paying twice to get one product. How, how would you respond to that? Well, it was um, the conference was bringing people together who were both family and children's ministries. Um, so that was quite exciting. So I was going to be part of the, um, the training for the family ministries leaders, although people could choose what they went to. Um, and I think it was really valuable, actually, to have both of us there. And it was amazing how the ideas linked and flowed and were enriched by having both of us there. And what was really exciting for me is that how many people came? I mean, 120 people for a quite a small union really, and that there were 60 people from Estonia, including their president. Um, and Estonia wanted, or was it Lithuania, one of the countries anyway, wanted lots of their pastors to come. And so there were pastors there, I was speaking to them as well. And then I thought, well, I can really make a difference if I can speak to these people as well. And it's not just families and not just family ministries leaders, then maybe something bigger can happen. Karen, thank you very much. You're very welcome.